In this clip, I'm going to give you a few examples for the fifth question of the TOEFL speaking task. I have chosen these examples from the Cambridge preparation for the TOEFL test prep software. There are seven complete tests in that software, so I'm going to present here to you the seven examples of the fifth question. Listen to a conversation between two students. Sally, why the frown? Uh, Don, I have been trying to learn this list of vocabulary words, and I'm just getting nowhere. Here, take the list and ask me one of the words. You'll see. Okay. How about arthropoda? Um, oh, those creepy crawly things? But what kind of creepy crawly things? Snakes? No, 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 like spiders and scorpions. Right. See? You do know at least one word. So, how did you remember it? I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's because it starts with A, and I've managed to memorize the A words. But look at how long the list is. Okay. Well, I learned it by remembering that arthro means joints, like the disease arthritis affects the joints. And pod means foot, like a tripod for setting a camera on. I always try to connect new words with the words I already know. So, arthropoda refers to all those creatures that have lots of jointed feet. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty easy. Although, you know what? Now that I think about it, I kind of remember picturing all of the creatures in my mind every time I said the word. Ah, you mean visualizing them. That's a good way of remembering, making a mental picture. You could try color coding your words, too, like a traffic light. That helps me. Okay, what's that? What do you mean by color coding the words? Go through the list and, for example, color all the words you know well green because you can pass by them. And the words you kind of know yellow. And the words you really don't know red. Then focus on the red words. You stop at them and think about them. Of course, you don't have to use those colors. That's just my coloring system. Okay, yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. Um, got any other ideas? Sure. Make a song or a poem out of them. Like, uh, let's see. An arthropod with arthritis met a cephalopod with sinusitis. Okay, wait. What is a cephalopod and what does it have to do with sinusitis? Well, cephalo has to do with a head, right? Like the disease encephalitis is an inflammation of the brain. And a cephalopod is a big-headed creature like an octopus, for example. So a cephalopod with sinusitis would have a really bad sinus headache. <laughs> okay, I see. So, um, finish your poem. Oh, um, uh, I've forgotten it. <laughs> <laughs> the students discuss several ways to memorize vocabulary. Summarize the ways, then state which of the ways you prefer and explain why. Sally is learning vocabulary, but she is having a problem with remembering the words. John is suggesting her a few techniques how she can remember the words. The first way is to break down a word into parts, and then connect it parts with the words that you already know. The second way is to visualize the words. You visualize what they represent, make a mental picture of the words. The third way is color coding. You color code the words that you know with green, the words you kind of know with yellow, and the words you don't know with red, and then you focus your, your attention on the red words. The fourth way is to make a song or a poem out of words. I will prefer the color coding of words, because on that way I can easily see what I do not know and what I do know, and then focus my attention on what I do not know. Listen to a conversation between two students. Hey, you've got your arms full, Ted. Would you like a hand? Nah, I can manage. These are all the books I need for my American short story course. Quite a load, isn't it? Um, yeah. Well, literature courses always require a lot of books. Yeah, and you know what? I was supposed to buy a lot more books, but I didn't have the money. Oh, textbooks are expensive. Uh, hey. Did you stop off at the library first to see if you could get any of the books there? 
Yeah, but I couldn't find any of the titles on the list. Okay, but um, in literature courses, usually you can find the stories you need in different texts. Yeah? Yeah. Let me see your list. Um, oh, see this book of stories by Edgar Allan Poe? You can probably find all the stories in other books or collections of famous short stories. But how can I be sure? Uh, did you check the course syllabus? I bet the professor has stated exactly what stories you need to read before the class meeting. And, um, you can look for them in other books. Do you have the course syllabus? Yeah, right here. See? Okay. Well, see? You need to read Chrysanthemums by John Steinbeck. That definitely should be in the library in a book of short stories. Did you look? Well, uh, no. I didn't look for individual stories. Well, uh... I suggest you keep the receipts for all of these books and then search for the exact stories you need in the library. I'm sure you'll find a lot of them there. Then you can take the books you don't need back to the bookstore. Yeah, I could do that. But, you know, I like to own my books, highlight passages and scribble notes in the margins and whatnot. Oh, well... Oh, hey, here's another thing you could do. Those books look new. Did you go to the used bookstore first? Used bookstore? Yeah. There's a used bookstore on um, University Avenue. They buy used textbooks at the end of the semester. If that professor has been requiring that the students read the same books every semester, chances are that you'll find them there. And um, that way you'll have your own copy and you won't be paying so much. The woman has two suggestions for the man. Describe the man's problem. Then state which of the two suggestions you prefer and explain why. Ted needs a lot of textbooks for the literature course, but textbooks are very expensive. The woman is suggesting him two solutions for that problem. The first solution is go to the library and find individual stories that he needs in different textbooks, not the exact textbooks that are on the list. But then he said that he likes to own his books. The second solution she is suggesting to him is to go to the used bookstore. If the professor is requesting from the students to use the same textbooks as the previous generations, then he will probably find all the needed textbooks there. I will prefer the second option and buy used textbooks because I also like to own my books so I can read them again sometimes in the future. Listen to a conversation between two students. Hey, Steve. I heard you've moved out of the dorms. Well, no, I haven't. I'd like to, but... Yeah, what's the problem? Well, the places close to campus are expensive, and the ones I can afford are too far to walk. So, uh, I've got to figure out what transportation's going to cost me. Buses and trains aren't that expensive, are they? Nah, the problem is schedules. Sometimes I have to stay on campus late, uh, after things stop running. So I'd have to take a taxi or get a car. What's wrong with getting a car? Gets you where you want to go at your convenience. A car? In the city? No, thanks. Besides, insurance rates are high for my age group and, you know, other costs. Uh, maintenance, parking. That's a point for being close to campus. Also, it's easy to get home if you forget something. Yeah, and sometimes I like to take an afternoon nap because of the late hours I'm in the lab. It'd be nice to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Can't if you live out in some suburb. Maybe it's best to stay in the dorms right on campus. Yeah, well, one of my complaints about the dorms is they're too noisy in the daytime. Can't sleep because everyone's got their music going. You get your meals and don't have to clean up afterwards. Um, I think I could save a lot doing my own shopping. So what's the difference in costs of um, a dorm, a place near campus, one on the train line, or, um, oh, on the bus route? I don't know. You don't know? Well, if I were you, I'd get all the figures and make a, you know, a hypothetical budget. A budget showing you taking a taxi three times a week and a budget for the costs of a car and just put all the possibilities on paper. I think you'd make a better decision doing that. 
and also make a list of advantages and disadvantages. The students discuss the man's options, describe his problem, then state which of the options you prefer and why. Steve wants to move out of the campus because he says that the campus is very noisy. But he has a problem. The places closer to the campus are very expensive. And if he rents a place that is further away from the campus, then he, then he will need to use some means of transportation to get to and from the campus. Sometimes he is staying very late at the campus and public means of transportation are not available anymore in those hours. Then he will need to take a cab or buy a car. And owning a car in a city is very expensive. If I am in his shoes, then I will rent a place that is closer to the campus because I believe it is very important for students to live close to the campus. If I live close to the campus, then I can quickly go home to take a nap between classes or have lunch at home between classes. Also, I can quickly go home to pick up something that I have forgotten. Listen to a conversation between two students. I just finished my history project. Oh, that must feel nice. It takes me so long to do Professor Madison's assignments. Really? Well, what do you think the problem is? Do you have trouble understanding the task? Um, it's not a matter of understanding the material. My problem is technical. You know how he wants us to turn in the projects on disk? Well, I'm just computer illiterate. I write out all my assignments by hand. Wow. Well, um, you could pay someone to type up your handwritten work. There are always ads on the bulletin board of people willing to do that for a fee. Hmm, that's an idea. But it could get too expensive after a while. Yeah, I imagine it would. Oh, why don't you go on over to the Study Skills Center? Maybe they could direct you to some online sites that give typing lessons you can do on your own time. You know, they may even hold some beginning word processing classes. Do you think so? Well, I, I don't know for sure, but it's worth a try. And another thing you should do is sign up for a beginning computer course. You know, uh, the world is getting more technical every day, and if you really want to fit into the job market, you should learn everything you can about computers while you're here and have all these available resources. Yeah, I guess you're right. The students discuss different solutions to the woman's problem, describe the problem, then state which of the solutions you prefer and why. The woman has finished her assignment, but now she has a problem. The professor wants firm students to record their assignments on a disk, and that is a problem for her because she's always writing her assignments by hand, because she's totally computer literate. The man is suggesting her two solutions. The first solution is to hire somebody to do the typing for her. The second solution is to go to the study skills center and see if they can help her to get some online typing courses. Also, she should take some beginning computer course uh, because we live in a technical world today and knowing how to deal with computers is very important. I will prefer the second option and learn something about computers because I believe that knowing how to deal with computers is very important in today's world and today's job market. Hiring somebody to do the job for me is just a temporary short-term solution. Listen to a conversation between two students. Hey, you coming to the movie with us tonight? Nope, don't have money. You're always broke. How come you don't look for a job? Because a job would interfere with my studies. Well, that depends. A full-time job would, but there are part-time jobs around. Yeah, I saw the notice that they're looking for evening help in the student cafeteria. But even though it's part-time, working every night would cut into my study time. I'd get back to the dorm late after working and then have to stay up all night to catch up. There are other jobs than that. You know, I work concessions. They always need people to sell refreshments and junk food at university sports events and concerts. What would be the advantages of working there? Well, for one thing, it's a weekend job, so it wouldn't affect your studies. Yeah, well, that'd be okay. So how much do you spend on concerts and ball games? I didn't buy a student pass to save money, so I've been to only one game. My sister gave me the ticket for my birthday. Well, you see, with a concession job, you'd be at all the activities, 
and getting paid. You mean that I could see the games and concerts and earn money? Well, not really see them because you'd be at the concession stand, but you can hear the announcers. And it's kind of fun when excited fans come for refreshments and tell you what's happening. Better than nothing, huh? Yeah, sort of. And we take turns working the stands so that you can see some of the game or concert or whatever. So, how much does it pay? Well, not as much as the cafeteria job, but if you just need some extra cash. And how do I apply? I could take you over to meet Mr. Jennings.、Uh, he's the guy in charge. On Friday afternoon, say, you might be able to start right away. Great. The students discuss two campus jobs, explain the advantages and disadvantages of the two jobs that they discuss. The students were discussing two campus jobs. The first job is job at the cafeteria. Although it is a part time job, it will interfere with her studies because it is a late night job. When she gets back home late at night, she will need to spend the whole night on catching up with the studies and she will have little time for sleep and that will interfere with her studies. The other job is working at concessions, which means selling refreshments and junk food at university sport events and concerts. This is a better job because it is a weekend job and it will not interfere with her studies. The other advantage of this job is that she will get a chance to be present at university sport events and concerts without paying a ticket to be present there. Although it is a little less paid job than the cafeteria's job, it is better because it will not interfere with her studies and that is her main concern. Listen to a conversation between two students. Hey, Irene, you're looking kind of down. What's up? Oh,、uh, I am kind of depressed. The midterm test scores for Russian level two have just been posted, and I failed. Not just kind of, but dismally. Ah,、oh, gee. Well, I could help you in math or chemistry, but not in foreign languages. Sorry. I'm just at my wits' end. I guess I should drop the course, but I need foreign language credit. It's really going to have a bad effect on my grade point average, though. You could drop it and sign up for a different language. Well, that wouldn't help. I'm just not good at learning languages. Well, I do think some languages are easier than others. I mean, with Russian, you had to learn the Cyrillic alphabet. That's got to make it harder right off the bat. Well, I've done that already. I know it pretty well, in fact. The fact is that this is my second semester. If I switched languages, I'd have to start all over from the very beginning. Well,、uh, have you thought about getting a tutor? A tutor? Yeah, a tutor. You know, in the Student Service Center, they have lists of people willing to teach subjects they're good at. Do you think there'd be someone to help with Russian? Sure, why not? Maybe a Russian exchange student or a graduate student in the Russian department. Someone who needs some cash. It's a good idea, but I don't have the money to pay a tutor. But it doesn't cost anything. Wh- what do you mean it doesn't cost anything? You just said someone who needs money, and tutors aren't cheap, you know.、Um, it, it doesn't cost you anything. You see, the Student Service Center pays their tutors from some grant money they get. And that means that students who need help financially and are good in a subject can help those students who need some tutoring. So you're saying I could sign up for a tutor in Russian and not have to pay anything? Yeah, that's basically it. Of course, there might not be anyone around who can tutor Russian. You'll have to go over to the center and check that out. Well, it's worth looking into. Thanks for the information. The students discuss two possible solutions to the woman's problem. Describe the problem, then state which of the two solutions you prefer and why. Irene has failed the midterm test in Russian, and now she is depressed. She thought to drop the course, but she needs foreign language credit. The man is suggesting her to switch to some other foreign language, but she doesn't like that because she says that she is just not good in learning foreign languages. Also, if she does that now, in the second semester, she will need to start learning some other language from the beginning. 
The other solution he is suggesting to her is to find a tutor who is willing to give her some tutoring classes in Russian. But she says that she does not have money to pay a tutor. But he says that she will not have to pay him anything because the student service center is paying tutors from some grant money. I think that getting a tutor in Russian is much better solution than starting to learn some other foreign language from the beginning. Listen to a conversation between two students. I don't see why there's so much fuss about the student activity fees. Don't you? I think it's a very important issue. Why? The funds that are collected go toward university events like the lecture series and cultural programs, you know, stuff like that. I think those are important. I don't mind paying for them. I agree those are important, but I... And even the student newspaper is supported by the activity fee. I mean, if students didn't have to pay the fee, the university wouldn't have the funds for all those special activities. Yes, that's right. But what about all those organizations that also receive money? You know, the special interest groups. Well, why shouldn't the climbing club or the university band get funding? I'm not talking about those kinds of groups. I'm talking about ones that have a political agenda or some ideological one, like the Student Labor Association. In other words, you think that it is okay for the university to sponsor organizations that you're interested in, but not to sponsor those that don't interest you. I didn't say that. I'm not interested in football, for example. But I don't mind that the university gives my money to the team. I'm only concerned about those organizations that I think have an agenda to change the world. But those organizations have the right to exist, maybe even more so than those that only provide entertainment. They have the right to speak out. You know, the First Amendment, freedom of speech. I'm not saying that they shouldn't be allowed the freedom of speech. I'm just saying that if there is a political or ideological agenda, then the organization shouldn't be funded with student money. Why should my money go toward a cause that I don't believe in? Or worse yet, toward a cause that I'm completely against? Okay, but why should you be exempt from paying the student activity fee when you will be able to attend the same concerts or public lectures that I'm paying a fee for? Well, maybe those of us who object can help support the non-political events in another way. The students disagree on a university policy. Describe the policy, then state which side you agree with and explain why. The man doesn't understand why is there so much fuss about the student activity fees. Because the funds collected go towards university events, cultural events, the student newspaper and the university sport teams. The woman agrees that those events and organizations are important, and she doesn't have a problem giving her money to them. But she has a problem giving her money to some special interest groups that have some agenda to change the world, because uh, she may be completely against their ideas and their ideology. I'm going to side here with the men, because the money those organizations receive is very small. They won't be able to get rich with that money, and they won't be able to change the world with that minute amount of money.